Hi guys, welcome to the Savvy Money Show. And we're coming back for the second installment of the lockdown, post lockdown stocks to own. Now, if you find any of today's uh, entertainment helpful, don't forget to smash that like button. Helps get the uh, video out to more people. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you get notified when a new video comes out. Now, on with the video. All right. Now, some of you dividend chasers and dividend aristocrats will already know this one. It's AT&T. Well, this one I've spoken about. It came from $40 and it's still hanging around the low. It's hit low as $26. It's now at a $30 mark. It has a good dividend, 7%. P ratio of 15. Now, this looks to be a player in the 5G market. And... You know, anyone using a mobile or mobile network will know about these guys in the US. And I'll be also putting one for the UK in a minute. But I can't believe this hasn't been shooting up. Now, yeah, in my opinion, this is definitely one to watch. You know, even if you hold just for the dividend, it's but in my opinion, I would hold it for 5G. And once IG comes in. It will, uh, it will take off now. It has uh, this is bought in the bond sale, as we know, which has tanked the share price. But it also has the HBO Max. Obviously, it's not as good as we would have liked, but it's still another string of this bow. And we move on to the next one. BT Group. Now, this one has been sinking like a stone because it's been having so many problems, mainly in Italy. It's had regulation problems after regulation. It's been fined anti-bribery laws, anti-competition laws, anti-corruption laws. And it's solved all those. The people involved have gotten rid of. They've paid the fines. And they've gone through them. But then, you can see here, where it's, it's come down, you know, uh, along there. Now, you see how there was talks, you see it going up a little bit, there was talks of them selling open reach off. Now, open reach is a huge money maker for them. In my mind, this is 220, 204. Sorry, this is a two pound twenty, two pound forty a share stock. They have been languishing around the one pound mark 
for a long while. Now, you, you see there, from, from the 4th of May, and they've dipped up above the 110 mark a couple of times, but, and they've just scratched the 115 mark and come straight back down again. As I predicted the other day, uh, when I was knocking on the 110 mark, I said they will break the 110 resistance, they will then go through and break the 115 resistance. And if they can keep the 115 resistance, that, that they may be able to break the 120 resistance. They broke the 110 resistance, they broke the 115 resistance and have kept it. Now the next step is breaking the 120 resistance. If they break the 120 resistance, they can go on, go all the way up. Now, these guys are going to be the main player in 5G for the UK. They are the main provider of internet services for the UK. Not just the UK, but for a lot of providers in Europe. Uh, let's talk about the UK. It, if no matter who your provider is, whether it's Virgin or Talk Mobile, now if you have a problem in your phone, uh, with your phone and your Wi-Fi in your house, they'll send their own engineer. If they can't fix it, or if they think there's a problem outside of your house, they'll call out a BT engineer. It's as simple as that. And no matter who you pay for your services, they will be paying BT a line rental, even if you're not paying them a line rental. Incurred in that price somewhere will be a line rental that they pay to BT. So on every line in the country, they are getting money. That's something to bear in mind. Now, yeah, you know, then they said that the sale report was inaccurate. We, you know, it's, uh, I mean, And it's been inside of buying, you know. No offence at this price, there's going to be inside of buying. It's... No. No, uh, there's not really much here. Uh, they scrapped their dividend for this year, which makes sense. It's a bit like Disney scrapping their dividend. When... <clears throat> when you're investing heavily in 5G, when you've taken over one of the biggest mobile companies in the UK and Europe to to uh, as an investment for 5G, and You've put a load of debt on yourself as a huge investment which will pay off then like with disney and we've seen with disney plus paying off but like with disney that you've seen scrapping the dividend offsets the effect from the covid19 or the rony rony you know same with bt it offsets the effects of COVID-19 and not only offsets the effects of the virus but also pays off some of the debt and I know some of you may not like it I don't like it myself but there will be like companies like Royal Mail and a lot of other companies on the uh, stock exchange we've seen in the US and UK, they will be using this as an excuse to steamroll 
in uh, cost cutting exercises saying well people can't come to work because of this we have to bring in this implementation you'll see across the world more automated allowed before certain things that weren't allowed before because of workers rights and unions but now they have no option because for the companies to survive they have to carry on and the only sticking point was the unions and workers rights now that they don't have that problem no oh sorry i'll get back to you in later but banana armor uh, and if you don't want the AT&T or BT again back to Microsoft one of the people who produces the software you know as I said I went through how good they are the P ratio isn't that good but a dividend for a dividend aristocrat like them and the earnings per share is good but you have to look at their whole moat and right now everyone's focusing focusing on cloud the computing the hardware the software and that's because those sectors are really hot right now and it's right to focus on that but what they're not focusing on are the growth things that people aren't looking at look at how many are unemployed now you look at the technicals and you look at the Hi. In the US alone, 15% unemployed. It's 5% more than the recession, and that's 10% less than the peak of the Great Depression. But what they're saying is that's official figures. Saying unofficial figures, when you take the people who are furloughed, who are not considered unemployed who are just considered on PPP and things like that it will be double that however you look at the UK and you look at those figures and then you look at the ones who are furloughed uh, because in the US they say a majority of those will not be going back to work you look at those who are furloughed, those who are unemployed. It looks like it's over 60%. Uh, thing is, Microsoft own a small company we know of called LinkedIn. I use it myself they're for networking uh, they also own lynda.com which is one for learning platform now you have a job one of the best job platforms and no offense I've used the online apps the online websites for jobs before and I hate them LinkedIn makes things so much easier it's what you want from job search platform I haven't tried lynda.com but with Microsoft I assume it's the same now You can go for the router type providers, such as Cisco, who I've spoke about before. 
you know, I mean, you, you've got Cisco. They're not. They're a P ratio of eighteen, and a dividend of three. That's that's not high at all for a company. And if you look at it, then it's a pretty good company. And who's the other one? Um, Ubiquity, I think it is. Let me, let me see. For our friends across the pond. Yeah, that's right. Now, higher P ratio and dividend isn't worth talking about. But if you're looking for just the home routers, now, I just think that these are alternatives. There is, of course, other alternatives. There are where is it? Where is it? Oh, here. Yeah. Hold on. Apple. Now, if you're lazy, now the phone, which was smart because people couldn't go out and buy it. They could have ordered it online, but and done a pre-order online. But uh, think about it: people have been getting these stimulus checks. People know the new Apple phone are coming out. They wait until lockdowns ended. People have a chance to save up their stimulus checks. Uh, all these people who are obsessed with Apple. They can go out and get it now. They reckon they predict that Apple's going to do very well, especially in China. They do a dividend of one percent. It's nice to have, but it's not worth talking about really. Uh, earnings per share of twelve point seven. Great for a growth stock. P ratio of twenty five. That's good, but I consider it quite highly priced. You've got to remember, it's not one of these who follows Warren Buffett blindly. You've got to remember, Warren Buffett had a go on how he holds 5% of his stock he could buy. He held 20 to 30% of his stock. He sold it when it hit 320. Now, I think these will benefit greatly from this pricing. I think these will benefit greatly from all the things they're in. But you have to remember, there's certain things going on in the background that will affect them. Trump squaring off to China, I think everyone will be asked to choose a side. And hopefully Apple don't get caught in the middle, but the products are made out there. And carries on. He's, he's banning US com companies from selling to Hawaii. So if the president of China comes to it, turns around and says, um, I don't want any US citizens buying Apple products. Mm. Or any US products. That's what it's going to Now, this isn't just considered a luxury item here, it's considered a luxury item out in China as well. Now, there was another one I'd be wary of. Apple, I'm only wary of because it has a high valuation at the moment. But not PE, but high price. And I think I'm waiting for it to come down a bit before going but it's a good solid company you can't say zoom still think zoom will hit 200 but i just think the risk to reward is too much and i'll give you my reasons 
you can see it going up 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 and then there's a little dip that doesn't bother me what bothers me more is the p ratio is 1900 that doesn't bother me because it's a growth stock it bothers me a little bit but it's a growth stock but so mainly i go by forward p what bothers me is although it's the main one in its field best at what it does it's a one trick pony it's a subscription subscription based model and i think it's going to do better it's got good earnings this year they reckon they're going to have good earnings next year the problem I have with it is that I spoke about Zoom in the previous one. I do think that they uh, you got to look at the competitors as well. And one of the competitors, you've got to see the price point. Sorry. Price point is 171. Microsoft is 184. They have their version. It's not as good as Zoom, no, but they are get, getting they're getting their traction all of like Disney Plus isn't as good as Netflix. But they are gaining traction a lot quicker. And you even have uh, sorry. You even have a Cisco at cheaper at $45. And I know it's not based on price only, but when you look at the PE ratio, earnings per share, dividend, you know, market cap, and the moat around these companies. And I think now we need to look at the moats around these companies. Zoom doesn't have a moat, it's a one trick pony. So, and the other one spoke about Microsoft a lot because I think it has a huge mo, a lot of potential. So if you're looking for a company like Zoom, I'd go for Cisco or Microsoft. Simple as that. Oh, sorry about this. Let's keep going. Now I'm going to tell you about another one that Facebook. dollars into Facebook they have a high PE ratio yes they don't pay a dividend fine I don't mind that from a growth stock the difference is that because I would be paying tax on that anyway being in the UK the thing is that they are growing look at this how they've grown steadily since then there's only been these two dips there but still, it, you can see a straight line growth. <clears throat> and I'm kicking myself for getting out. I am. Just because I bought there where it was low. And when everyone was saying don't to buy, I'd done my research and found it was a buy. And I sold. And then they come out saying they were doing their competitor for Zoom because I wasn't given the new information. I didn't have the new information. And if I had factored that in, I wouldn't have sold. And then they come out with their Facebook shops and they're partnering with 
Shopify. If I'd known either of them, I wouldn't have sold. So, yeah. So, this is the thing. Facebook also laid down millions of lines of f f cables in Africa, which is. I did a f thing on Vietnam versus China, up and coming uh, countries. Uh, Africa actually has 28 out of the 50 highest rising economies in the last decade. Fastest rising, sorry. And uh, China's uh, investing heavily in Africa as well. Facebook has put a lot of investment in there so that people can go on Facebook and African com companies can advertise there. Uh, not just African companies, but companies that want to target Africa. And don't forget, he already owns a payment system out in Africa, Mark Zuckerberg. So, yeah, and uh, a mobile technology out there. So, he knows what he's doing when it comes to Africa. As soon as he wants something done, he gets it done. And they make a lot of acquisitions. But, anyway. Let's move on. And... I, I think that Amazon is just too high for me at the moment. Uh, Google, amazing. They have the antitrust thing going on. And I think their uh, buy sell is like in the middle at the moment. And I think I'll wait for the earnings. And then, the, you know, I bought it again. I bought when it was 19. Uh, I, I bought when people were saying to sell and then it came out it went it just shot up and then I sold I want to buy again when it drops and if it does drop and hold and not sell <clears throat> alright now Starbucks done a video about this and now I want to say Anything with this is a short term hold. P /E ratio is 27. <clears throat> That's not the reason why, because P /E ratio is just one data point. And the problem with this is I think people will go out, the evidence has shown us people will go out and buy it when they first beat lockdown because they're tired of making their own coffee. They're tired of the same old thing, they want a bit of luxury. In the US especially, they want to taste a bit of luxury. But then, they have a drive through Only at the moment. Uh, there's a huge one around the corner from me, which has closed, because it isn't drive through And the main thing that Starbucks built its business on, is people could sit there all day with the computer... Streaming white free Wi-Fi as long as they were buying coffee. It cuts down on their costs, having them closed and having them drive through, but it loses them a lot of business. And these people will go elsewhere. And I think they'll I think once you lose some of these customers who are regular customers, you won't get them back because they're charging a lot of money. Now, I had a friend who ran a real estate business in Spain. He had two major shops. The crash happened out there. He ran it from a pub because of free Wi-Fi, something similar. A lot of people did it. And his mind is getting drinks and uh, 
cheaper than the shop and uh, and the food and then they had to close down and had to do it from home and he had the Wi-Fi there he went from there he had his little office there anyway it just it just saved so much money by not going to the pub and what it meant was his missus never gave him any aggro for going to the pub and she left him alone in his office all day so I think in the long term before this Starbucks wasn't looking a great model anyway when you looked at their books their their finances they were making money but they weren't growing as much they was having to how could I say bring innovative pro products and I mentioned them in my video with them before like a chewy moon and the likes you know which are nice products and but however the it seems to have all the right things but when you do a deep dive into it and look at it pre-covid-19 it was starting to go downhill anyway and i think this kind of papered over some of the cracks i think once pe people have gone out had their starbucks fix and then gone back home they're going to start being frugal it, they're not going to want to be spending five ten dollars uh, or pounds on a cup of coffee uh, each morning and then each evening when they can go to another place and pay one pound or two pounds for a bigger one or for another one and it may not be called the same or have the same brand name but or even beer is nice but the way they see it is especially with the free apps now which are in the link below a lot of people didn't know about that they will think hold on I'll put that money into a share or a fractional share of a company and people will be thinking about their future instead now now talking about thinking about your future we thought the housing market was going to crash but people seems it's just the airbnb and being frugal people aren't paying traditional estate agents they were going to go for these two redfin in america and Zillow now I'm trying to find doorsteps for the UK but you of course have the uh, Zoopla and You, and you have all the others as well uh, but I think Redfin and Zillow are going to be good ones to look into Redfin they do the whole scanning of the house which will give them the advantage over Zillow Zillow they look like good stock to grow but I just think people are going to go more online now. I've seen it more and more. I've in the past I've contacted. Uh, I've just seen the for sale sign outside. 
I've contacted the number and to find out how much they've said I'll oh, just look online and I said no you're all right mate he's gone well all our deals are online I said no nah, I've done that before I called you because I didn't want to bother looking online and mainly because I wanted to negotiate that's all and I know what happens. I go online. I put. I ask them a question, and then they bombard me with emails of properties trying to sell me one. And that's not what I want. Nah. Hopefully you agree with my picks. It's okay if you don't. Uh, put in the comments if you do or don't. The reason why. And in the, hope you leave a like and subscribe. If you are interested, I'm going to do a video on why Warren Buffett thinks there's going to be another crash and what you can do to prepare for it.